Well, I set up as usual and uh, read their little letter that stated that uh, you couldn't sell any private firearms other than going to an FFL dealer. And I didn't agree with it since I've been setting up a gun show since 1993. Uh, I decided I was going to go against their little letter, and uh, individual, three individuals came by, Hispanic individuals, they were looking at a weapon, and uh, one asked me, what did it take to buy the weapon? And I told him, I said, well, I need a Texas ID and cash, because I don't do cash, or cre I don't do credit or checks. He said, well, I don't have a Texas ID. I said, sir, then I can't sell you a firearm. And so his buddy kept looking at it, and they left and came back in a little bit, and uh, asked to see the weapon again. And, they're looking at it, and the one said, well, I'll take it. I said, I need a Texas ID. So he handed me a Texas ID, and I'm looking at his Texas ID. Uh, it looks just like mine. The date on it was 1970, so that made him over 21, eligible to buy a pistol. I asked him, <clears throat> I asked him the, uh, the trick question, are you a felon? And he said, no. And I said, well, you don't have any hair. And so he lifted his hat off, and when he did, we all laughed, you know, the three of us, Billy, Johnny, and me. He said, yeah, you don't have any hair. And uh, he bought the weapon, so I went next door to get some lunch. And then when I came back, there was uh, two APD officers and ATF officers there asked if I was C.B. Copeland. And I said, yes, sir, I am. So we'd like to talk to you. So I turned to my friend Johnny, and I said, Johnny, I have a pistol on my side. Please take the pistol. I don't want to get shot out in the parking lot. So he pulled the pistol out, and when he did, they asked him to come with us. And we went to the parking lot. One of them grabbed me by the back of my shirt, walked me out the front door. I told the gentleman, I said, there's no need to hold on to my shirt. I'm not going to run. I said, I'm with you. So I walked out to the parking lot. They asked me a few questions. They asked me if I'd sold a weapon to an illegal alien. I said, well, if I did, he had an illegal Texas driver's license. I said, all I know is I asked the gentleman for a Texas ID. I asked him if he was a felon. And I told him that I only took cash. And I sold him the weapon. So he proceeded to say, well, we're going to confiscate your weapons. I said, well, you got to do what you got to do. And uh, one of them leaned down, squatted down in front of me and got real close to me and said, aren't you sorry? And I said, for what? I didn't do anything. Uh, they said, well, we're not going to arrest you. I said, well, I already knew that. And uh, I got up and went back in and set up the gun show because my friend had already taken my stuff down. Uh, I haven't heard from APD or, or ATF since then. And I wore his hat because I, I, I honestly have a lot of admiration for the individuals doing the job that they're doing. They need to do it by the Constitution of the United States, and they need to remember that our forefathers fought for all of our freedoms. And we all have families, we all want to go home to them, we all want to have peace in 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 the state of Texas and in, in Austin. And I I just don't get it. I don't get how after night after 1993 up to now, I'm all of a sudden violating federal law by selling private firearms. I read the ATF book and it states in there that courts nor government has a right to regulate the sale of a private firearm. So therefore, ATF is in violation of the federal law and I think our Texas Rangers should investigate them and press charges on them. Now that's the feeling from my heart. I'm a 32nd degree Mason. Uh, I'm a Mason at Live Oak out of Kyle, Texas, and uh, I think at least three quarters of the founding fathers were Masonic Masons and signed the Constitution of this United States of America. And I live in America. This is not a police state.